Yo guys, in past episodes we've explored how to wireframe in an iPad or even in Sketch with Rafa and stuff like that. But today, we're going to explore how to wireframe and how to write flows right within Sketch. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, I have here a page from my friend Matt D. Smith, which is really interesting. It's really well designed with all those movements and all those animations. But what it is, basically, it's a Sketch library, which has a bunch of arrows, a bunch of curves, a bunch of flows that show us how to maybe write a flow or maybe write a wireframe right within Sketch. Now, you can download the preview or you can buy this library. And I highly recommend you buy this library because it's really well designed and really well done. But regardless, let's get started. Now, I have here my white canvas, but don't worry about it because we're going to fill it for now. Now, flows are a really interesting tool to show what's going to happen in an app, right? So when users tap on X button, they're going to go to Y screen. And when they scroll down, they're going to be able to see a list or whatever, right? Now, in today's episode, we're going to do a login flow. So let's go to our libraries after we've added the flow kit library right here. And we're going to be able to see that we have a bunch of options. Now, one of the options, for instance, is to have a device. So we're going to have an iPhone 10 because of its shape. It's really recognizable. And we're going to call it Splash or maybe Initial Screen. Cool. Now users are starting the initial screen. And in there, if we go to Flowkit again, they have a bunch of options, specifically two options. Let's align it to the center or even a little bit up in this case. There we go. And what this symbol means or what this symbol means is that when users are starting the initial screen and they go here, they have two options, option A or option B. Option A can be to sign up. Option B can be to log in. Now, we don't have too much interest on the sign up side of things. So we're going to put just sign up screen like that. Let's keep it consistent. Cool. But in the login one, we have a little bit of interest because we have to show some stakeholder what's going to happen when, you know, users tap on the login screen, et cetera, et cetera. And as you can see, everything is beautifully designed. So we're just going to go to Flowkit. And instead of putting a device now, what we're going to do is actually to put a box. Now, to put a box, you go to Blocks, Rectangle, and then we're going to add the default rectangle. Now, we're going to align this here. Cool. And we can also align those two, maybe. It's going to look a little bit better. Awesome. And maybe give this one a little bit of space. Cool. And now, when you tap Login, you're going to go to the login screen, right? Like that. And then you might want to have two more options. Maybe in the login screen, you want to log in with email. Or maybe you want to log in with social. And we're not going to enter into details. We could put Twitter or Google or whatever. But for now, let's look at that. And let's add 40 pixels of spacing, which is the default spacing. And when you get to the email screen, users are going to be able to fill and then continue. Right? And then if they tap continue, we can go to flow kit, go to flow, go right, an arrow. As you can see, I have the right arrow and I can change some parameters in the right side with overrides. But when we tap continue, we're going to be able to go actually to one page like that, that it's going to have the initial screen. Cool. If I sign up with social, I'm going to get the initial screen. But what I can also do 
is put it right here. And instead of having to write it two times, I can go to flow kit, flow, down, arrow, like that. Put it there and go all the way down. Cool. So as you can see, this was a really simple flow for a login screen. Let's group this, and call this login flow. And we're gonna do another one, which is gonna be to showcase what happens when users go inside a table view. So let's imagine that we have a table view here, right? And it has a bunch of rows, etc. And then users tap on one row of content and they go to the next screen, which is gonna have a bunch of festivals, for instance. And then once they tap into one festival, they're gonna go into the detail page. Now, in order to do that, let's reuse a couple of symbols that we have. So let's start here with home screen. And we obviously have context of what this app is because you know we're designing it. So, and also stakeholders know a little bit about the app, but we're gonna have an arrow like so. And once you tap the home screen or once you are inside the home screen, and then you select the Sonar Festival 2018 in Barcelona. And you can obviously put a little bit of a spacing here and that's a little trick. Like so, cool. Now, once you select the Sonar Festival, you can go to the Sonar page. And let's do the spacings again, like so. And then you can copy And then in the Sonar landing page, you can select the artist. Like so. And after the artists, you can copy and paste. And then go to any artist. In this case, Cario. Cool. Now you can see that this is a home page or this is a page. This is also a page. This is actually an action. So let's select the Kaigo here and then Kaigo page. And this is also a page. So in order to differentiate it, instead of putting an iPhone, what we could do is actually change the look and feel or maybe do something like that, right? So the ones that are dashed are gonna be a page and the ones that are filled are gonna be an action that users take and you could even say that with a dark or with a red, sorry. Now, if you wanna say that you can go back, you can actually go to flow kit, flow. We wanna go left with a curve, down. And you can see that we want the U-turn, but we don't want that U-turn. We want the U-turn going up, so the logic is that you go up and then you go down and it was a little bit hard to categorize that, I guess. So you put it into the up position and we'll do something like that. Cool. And now we're going to select flow it again and we're going to add a small label here, which is going to contain back. And that tells us that you can go back by just tapping a button and then you go back. Now you can do the same in the landing page. So let's do something like that. And maybe what we're gonna do instead of going to the action, we wanna go back like that. And we wanna go back like the other way. So instead of up, we wanna go down, left, you turn, there we go. Cool. And cool. And if we wanna highlight this action, which is scrolling down, or to highlight that you might scroll down, let's duplicate this symbol. 
do something like that. Select the U-turn with a dashed. And that's going to mean that instead of going with an action like a tap, you're going with an action like a scroll, right? And then we can change, obviously, flow, down, curve, right, and then the U-turn, and boom. And if something is bothering you, the cool thing about this library is that it's highly customizable. So you can see that I don't have a thought now, but I can go back. I can scale those things and everything is pretty much going to work. You can see that I can scale it like that. I can scale it like that. And everything is pretty customizable and it uses a bunch of symbols, constraints, as we learned last week, etc., etc. So you can use it at any point in time in any of your designs to show your work in a really quick way. Now, I hope you learned that ton in this episode and you enjoyed this library, that it's a really cool library from my friend Matt. Seriously, one of the best libraries or sketch files that I found in a really long time. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, let me know in Spectrum or on Twitter, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.